Hey everybody, it's Vault Fox. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my basement where today I'm going to be showing you my 3D printing setup. This has been a highly requested video from a lot of you guys and I think the last time I really even talked about what my setup was other than like casually mentioning what my printers are was like back in August whenever I made my 3D printing like 101 video which is it's a little dated but I still stand by a lot of the stuff that I say in that video. I just have two different printers now and they're actually not even that big of an upgrade so let's get on over to my setup. Before I show you my 3D printing setup, I'm going to give you the lay of the land of this basement. So whenever you come into the basement, you are greeted to these things on the right side. And over here is my cosplay area, and over there is my husband's miniature painting, um, D and D hobby area. Got a lot of boxes because he's always buying a lot of miniatures, but I can't really um can't really fault him. I mean, look at I've got all these helmets and stuff over on mine. I just cleaned this yesterday. If you guys want me to, I could do an updated like cosplay room tour, but this is going to be centered around 3D printing. And as you turn this way, there's my Peloton. I love my Peloton, but this isn't a video about the Peloton. Um, we also have a TV here that we barely ever use. Um, honestly, we use it whenever um, Dell comes into town to watch Red Letter Media on my Switch. So that's kind of why the TV's here, honestly. Yeah. So anyways, let's get to the part that you guys are most interested in. And obviously this light is not normally here. It's here because this is a dungeon over here but this let me uh get over here Ooh, this is my 3d printing area Ooh, isn't that isn't that fun let me see if i can get a better angle of this for you guys so this is what you see it's in the back corner of our basement and those of you that have been around since whenever i started making videos back in 2020 you will remember that i had one little measly little area for my 3d printer it was very small but i made it work and that's what i used for about three years until i got this setup behind me i would not have been able to afford this rack as well as both of the printers that are on there without the help of you guys for supporting my channel as well as like clicking on the affiliate links down below and shopping through those affiliate links as well as all of you that worked with me whenever i was doing commissions about six or seven months ago but right now i'm not taking any because it is just it was cutting into my own personal hobby time and something had to give i would not have been able to have this setup that i do without the support of you guys so again thank you so much for supporting me in all that i do and it does not go unappreciated so yeah again this is the entire setup and i'll go through everything that's on here and everything that's in the bins and kind of just give you a little bit of a tour of the chaos that happens over here. So to start off this like wire rack thing, I'm pretty sure we got from Target. It is not like long enough for the printers to completely be on there. However, it does work as long as you make sure like that the feet on your printers are within these little rungs here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by showing you everything that's in the bins down here and then kind of skip over the printers, go up there, and then I'll get in touch with the printer. So down here on the bottom rung, we've got my, this is my UV resin chamber, or not resin chamber. This is my UV resin curing box. And I do have footage of me putting this together and I will be making a video on it. I thought that I lost it, but honestly, it's just a cardboard box with aluminum foil and some 60 watt LED lights inside of it. And I use that to cure my larger prints that I'm painting resin onto to make it smooth. Now under here, this is actually a bin of materials for my Tally Zora cosplay. I have actually put that cosplay on hold. Obviously I haven't really done anything with it, mostly because we are working with, I believe, Parallel Studios and they are going to be making some custom tally fabric. So I am waiting for that custom tally fabric to begin work on that again. So I just leave all of that supply down there. And then over here, this is kind of leftovers of um, whenever I did commissions. So I have a lot of foam here. Um, this is like acoustic foam that I think I got from, no, it's not acoustic foam. I think I got this from Lowe's like years ago, but I use that to package orders. And the same thing goes for all this stuff. So this stuff, if you've ever bought a Creality printer or maybe just a 3D printer in general, they have this foam in it. Do not throw that away. Cut that up with a box cutter and save it. And I do this to kind of bulk out packages, to kind of pad things and things like that. But yeah, um, this is the stuff from one of these printers. So like it's, I got these printers, what? last 2020 and I still have this much left over. So do not throw this away. It is great for packaging up orders. And what's in this one? Okay, so in this bin, oh my goodness, hold on, let me pull it down. In this bin, I've got all of my Vogue Tan raw prints. So there's my chest piece, there's my shins. But yeah, I just have all of my raw prints in here. There's some leather for the belt, things in that. Um, what is all in here? Holy heck. Yeah, so I've got the, what are these called? Shoulder pieces, I have a video on that. And um, all the other finished pieces, I have like my gloves, my husband's Mando gloves, and I just keep it all in here because 
I mean, it's still not done. I need to finish it and I will be finishing these by the end of the year, hopefully, because my husband and I want to wear these to a convention. We want to be Mando and Bo, so I got to get on that. <laughs> but I think this is probably a relatable thing for a lot of 3D printers. A lot of us have just endless amounts of just stuff that we need to finish. Like I printed this months ago and it's still not finished. So don't feel bad. We all have stuff like this. In fact, I'm pretty sure that this next bin I have has even more of um, stuff. So let me put the camera down because I can't really lift this with one hand. All right, let's squish that back over there. And in this one, this is another bin full of stuff I have not finished yet. This is my third helmet that I've made. Every bo helmet that I've shown on the channel has been a commission and they actually aren't mine, so I actually need to make my own. And this is a file from Mystery Makers. I will make sure to link him down below. He, at the time whenever I printed this, only had this available on Patreon, but I believe he is selling singular files now on Etsy. So that's that helmet that will get finished eventually. And this is a random bo shin that I printed a little bit too big for my own legs, so I'm just keeping it around. And I actually think that I might be able to use this for somebody and just goes to show. I mean, this is a perfectly good print. I didn't want to throw it away, so yeah. And the rest of the stuff in here is mostly stuff for Edelgard. Um, I've got like her cape fabric. I've got these little things from Dangerous Ladies. There's some bits of the axe that I still have in here that I haven't finished. And then I also have this. Um, this is basically Black Widow batons. And I was intending on making these Black Widow batons for Dragon Con, but I'm just, I'm not in the mood. And I'm just like, whatever, it's fine. I don't need batons, it's fine. But yeah, that's just another bin full of random stuff that I just need to finish. And has no other place, so yeah. All right. Are you gonna fit? Oh yeah, it fits, okay. And over here, we've got um, a Mandalorian helmet, which looks actually really nice and shiny on camera. However, this thing, I am not happy with it. There's a lot of paint runs on the front. Uh, you can't really see them on camera, but they're there. And um, so it's kind of turned into a, like a paint tester. So I was using, I was testing out paints over here. The big reason that I never ended up finishing this helmet is because it does not fit my husband's head. It barely fits, like his nose would be squishing the visor if I put a visor in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and reprint it and reprint it a little bit bigger. And hopefully I will end up liking the result of that second one. So right now it just kind of sits there. I don't really know what to do with it. I don't really want to sell it. I, don't, I just don't feel right selling that, but yeah. And then this over here is my um, Valkyrie bo helmet that I made a while back from a file from Esoteric FX. I really like this helmet. I just don't have a place for it right now. So it just kind of sits over here. All right. And over here, this is just um, supply boxes that I had. These are 12 by 12 boxes that I got, I believe, from Staples. They were like 50 cents if you bought them in a pack of like 25. So I've got a bunch left over. This is the upholstery foam that I use for inside of all my helmets to pad them. It's really cheap if you get it from Joann's, especially in the remnant bin. Like this was what, $10 for that. That's going to pad out like maybe five or six helmets. So it's a lot cheaper than buying helmet foam from Amazon. Here's the printers again. Do, do, do. We're going to ignore that and go up. <laughs> um, so one thing I do get asked about a lot is what filament I use to print and I almost exclusively use Xyltech filaments and the main reason I do that is because they come in these amazingly large five kilogram spools so I never really ever have to worry about my filament running out in the middle of a print like you know whenever you're printing a large helmet and or even like larger pieces of armor I usually never have to worry about it until it's like at the very end of the roll and I do place mine on these Lacey Susans however not every Lacey Susan is created equal in working for this method I think that one of these one of these is from Target and one of these is from Amazon and I can't remember which but I'll make sure to link them down below. However, you want to get a Lazy Susan that is smaller than your spool and you're probably like, why the heck would you want to do that? Well, I have a larger one that basically encapsulates this whole thing and it's not fluid enough to be able to you know, kind of roll freely like this whenever it's being pulled down by your extruder. And whenever I had a larger one, it was essentially every time I tried to print something, it would snap right there. And it was just, it the the extruder was trying to pull too much and there was it just wasn't working i've only ever had one or two instances where i've had the filament snap and usually that is caused by my printer and not necessarily this method it is because the printer's extruder is gripping the filament too hard and i need to just loosen it up at the extruder so whenever i do that it's usually fine another issue i do have with it occasionally is whenever there's not a lot of filament left on the spool it sometimes will just kind of you know it won't be able to be pulled in correctly so i usually would just put like one of my one 
one, two, three blocks on top to weigh it down, and that usually fixes it. But yeah, that's my method. Um, I, like I said, I almost exclusively print with this, like, black, glossy black PLA from Zaltec. I have dabbled it in other colors, but I really do like the convenience of having these just huge spools on my printers at all times and I never really have to worry about any type of filament run out. And we'll move over to this middle thing and in here I just have a lot of my supplies for 3D printing. I believe this is a small spool of filament that I got from one of my Creality printers. This up here, let me put it down over here. For you guys. It is full of um, just extra parts like I've got extra hot end stoppers, I've got extra clips, I've got some extra, uh, what are those called? spirally things the uh oh my god what are they called springs i got some extra springs in there they've got extra of the extruder plugs some nozzles i really need to um actually replenish this this is kind of like running out of a lot of stuff and my wrenches that i always seem to be losing i put over in there just has a lot of my random small bits up in there and in each of these drawers, this one is almost primarily just PTFE tube. I used to have some Capricorn tubing, but I ran out. But yeah, I've got some of that in there for whenever I have some filament blockages. I also have um, this like 3D printer accessories toolbox, um, I believe. Yes, this is the one that has my six millimeter nozzles that I am not brave enough to put onto my machine yet because my machines print perfectly as they are and I don't want to go through that growing pain. But yeah, I do have larger nozzles as a lot of people have always asked me. Um, I just haven't put them in yet. And in here is just a lot of spare parts. There's like a USB cable. Um, there's an extra rolly thing, whatever that technical term is. Um, a lot of wheels, a lot of just random spare parts. I have the all metal extruder end for the Creality. I just haven't put it on because I'm waiting for these ones to go. Like honestly, you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me whenever I show you my printers. Um, they're not modded at all. And then this top drawer is just things like my glue to glue uh, models down with. Uh, I don't know what the heck that is in the back. Oh, this is stuff for, um, that's actually just for helmet making. That's not necessarily 3D printing. And yeah, then the rest up there, up at the top, is just random stuff that I don't have a place for. Like, um, there's my Darksaber hilt. There's my, this is my um, Attack on Titan sword. I've got a, what is this? I know, just got some other like filming equipment up there as well. And finally, let's get to what you're all here for my 3D printers. So I have two Creality CR10Ss and this is Bo and this is Ahsoka. Say hi to Bo and Ahsoka. They are very good to me. <laughs> but like I was saying earlier, neither of these machines is modified. I have a good reason for that and the reason for that is that I don't like to fix things that aren't broke until they are broken. And some of you might be like, that's kind of stupid and that's not very being very proactive. However, I have got the modifications in that box for whenever the things go on it. And I think that's pretty proactive. So I'm just going to let the plastic parts on the Creality CR10 just kind of wear themselves out. And whenever they wear themselves out, then I will upgrade them. That's just my methodology for it. And also I use these printers as a tool. These are not necessarily machines that I'm looking to modify or upgrade or tinker with. I tinker with them enough to make sure that they're running on a daily basis. So that's enough for me. Again, I use my printers as a tool to help me with cosplay. And I do a little bit of tinkering here and there, but not enough to really like be anything amazing. So if you're here for like a crazy mod on a Creality CR-10S, then you have come to the wrong place. But <laughs> yeah, so these machines have worked, these machines have worked pretty well for me for the past year or so. I have printed every single Bo-Katan helmet out on them, every single piece of Bo-Katan armor, everything that you've seen since like October of 2020 has been printed on one of these two machines. And I am very happy to have them. I have no desire to have more than two printers. I am lucky if I can get these two printers to be printing at the same time with minimal issues. So I don't want any more added to the family as of right now. Two is more than enough than I need for my needs. So I'm not looking to create a print farm. This is not a print farm. This is just a personal, like, this is my thing. So yeah, um, not much to say about the Creality printers other than they're very reliable. I have had not very many issues that I couldn't solve with a, you know, a quick Google search and some tinkering. Um, don't really know why there's tape there, but you know, it's always a mess over here. I guess that's like the one thing that you can consider a modification, but it's not really is I print on mirror tiles. And that is because the glass plates that come with the 
Reality Printers is notoriously not flat and not level. So mirror tiles are always level and they are a lot easier to level like with your bed leveling and all that stuff. So that's why I print with those. Yeah, those are my two babies and I love them most of the time. <laughs> And that is my 3D printing corner. I hope that it was all that it could have lived up to be for you. And if you have any other questions about like my setup or stuff that I have, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I'm more than willing to go into depth about like certain things that I have on there, like my five kilogram spools and um, just my printers in general, like what I think about them. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Bye.